ladies and gentlemen, and uh, the tall Irish heckler in the back. Uh, <laughs> I to introduce uh, Mike Polani, give him a warm round of applause. <laughs>
Chopped off, like. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that was really short. <laughs> <laughs> that was from a uh, title sequence for The Priest. That movie is just. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. It was just a oh. sequence. Oh. Oh. Slash this guy's head and it splits open and the blood goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Are you sure this is like man, I'm using cartoons or something? <laughs> 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 I gotta learn, get this stuff out to you guys and hopefully perpetually you know, keep it going because it's so much fun. I, I get to see you know, everything outsourced and we don't get to have fun animating this stuff and making it alive and that. So, um, what I wanted to do was start out by you know, letting you guys you know. I'll, I'll go through a couple of things, different things that, um, basic things of how I would approach a scene. Just you know, it's something you can apply to either CG or stop motion or cutouts or whatever. Um, you know, just how I think about seeing how I approach it. Um, and I wanted to show you some really good examples here I brought along too in this first try. Um, here's a really good one. First of all, I'll show you this. This is really good. I think this was on the demo. Let's see. That's a ball. It's actually a bun wrap, but it started out as a bouncing ball. I did it as an example for students. Children. Uh, all I did was just. Uh, the bouncing ball first. Just going across the screen, so washing, stretching. And then once I got the ball, which is just the body, then I went back in and I added the head and put the necessary squash and stretch on that. And then again I went through and I put the arms in, and then I put the legs in, and then I put the ears in. 
<clears throat> and what I do is just build it up like that. So when you look at this at first, you think, well, it's kind of looks a little complicated with all the stuff going on, the overlapping ears, and there's a cat shadow and everything. And I did all these things piece by piece, one by one. And you could call that, you know, in traditional animation, they call that passes, like the first pass, second pass. In CG, I've heard it called layering, like they take the, the whole character as a whole and get the primary node and animate it going through its movements or whatever. And then you add the layering and later in the arms and all that stuff. But um, that's just to, to show you how simple you can start out with just like a bouncing ball and make it into a character. And I could go even further. This is like, this might be considered a first pass rough for some people. Like they'll put all that drawing in first. <clears throat> then they'll go over this and they'll put in the facial, facial expressions and the whiskers and the tail, and, you know, color separations on the belly, whatever you want. Add in, you can go crazy. Like, you guys know how Richard Williams is? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a perfect example of like going to the nth degree <laughs> of adding stuff and adding stuff and then changing the race and fixing it. It can go on crazy forever. And here's another one that I like to show everybody. I um, start off really loose and scribble like this. And I'm going to show a step here real quick. I'll show you. Now, whenever you see a drawing that's really, really extra rough like that, that's one of the extreme poses that I created at first when I first went through this whole thing. And then when they're cleaner like this, where they're not as thick lines, see how it's a little thinner the lines? And really fine. Those are the uh, in between the breakdown. So there's a kind of screen right there. There's one. Now, again, when you look at this, you say, wow, there's a lot of twists and turns going on. circle and this body shape and move that around the way that I wanted. I think I even did the beat too. I didn't even worry about the arms at first. I added those on later. And when you do that, when I, did the pose, I did the pose to pose method doing the body and the beat and the head moving around. And then when I went to do the arms, I went to what's called straight ahead and tried to just go on piece to piece to piece. Some of the drawings I already had the arms figured out where I kind of wanted them like that. But a lot of the time it was just going one, the next, the next, the next, and just trying to figure out a logical progression. In fact, I even did one arm at a time. I should cover that up. But, <laughs> um, you know, did like the right arm first. Just look at the right arm and see that it's got its own pattern of movement. It goes through. And then I went back and did the other arm. Does that help to avoid things? Absolutely, yeah. Because once you lay in one arm, and you go to do the second one, you can see what the other arm is doing. No, actually what I did was I, I kind of put the, the beak in the position where I kind of wanted it during the dialogue. Like, I did it in the flash, I scrubbed through it so you can the audio. Yeah. And then once I got the, the overall movement of where I wanted to the I went ahead and listened to what the sound was of the specific syllables and I tried to get them out the shape. That's like the last thing I always worry about is the lipstick. Because if you look at a lot of cartoons, the lips, the lips don't really match up. You know? it's, it's, it's weird because people, I don't know, it's like you can get away with a lot with lips a lot of the time. Even in The Incredibles, I was looking at The Incredibles not that long ago, and I'm thinking, this is really good animation. And then I was looking at the mouse and I was like, oh, that's a little bit off there, and that's a little bit off there. But it doesn't matter because the performance is so strong. Because the look you know, working the whole body and stuff. And it's exactly the same as this. It's just using a different technique. They're using the computer generated model. This is from the Iron Giant. This was done by Tony Fuccilli. And uh, let me just turn the volume for a little bit. And this is a really good example of how you can uh, get a great performance. And, and the thing about a 
approaching a scene like this is when you keep it all scribbly and loose like that, is you're not worrying about everything at once. You're just trying to get down the performance immediately and you're not worried about all the details. So check this out. It's at the kitchen table. It's really Would you say grace, please? And it's good because you can see the finished product too. The color group. Oh my god. <laughs> so much to just do little scribbles like this. You can move things around, change shape, gestures. It's just wonderful. And you learn so much by doing this. You can take it with you to anything, stop motion, whatever. It's just a great way to get into something quick and learn it. Play around with it, experiment. Artifacts going on. <laughs> Artifacting going on. Right there. Yeah. And your own business. I'm sick of your half breed interference, do you hear? circle with the crosshairs on it to, to show where the head tilt is and then I had a lot of stuff in there on that you know, the lip sync like I said before. It makes it really easy to attack this thing. Yeah. This, one. this uh, shows illustrates primary and secondary action, which is another thing I try to keep in mind. Like I was saying, like I'll do the body first. Excuse me, the primary action in this one is the, the guy's running and he slows down. And then the secondary action is he's bouncing a basketball at the same time. So I didn't have to think about the ball bouncing at all until I just added that on later. I just want to concentrate on the, the running the walk. And then I had the pointing arm even after the uh, bouncing ball. So you can just go crazy. I mean, you can add a cape to him or his hair, whatever you want to put in there. Anticipation down before it does anticipation up. Grabs, and then anticipates down again, and then pulls up, putting the butt lead away, <laughs> and overlapping the rest of the body. Up, and then here, you'll notice if you ever see those guys in the Olympics, and they pull those big weights up, they don't ever do it like symmetrically, like this usually. They, they have this thing with four arms up like that, and one elbow or wrist is usually ahead of the other, and doing a nice overlap. In animation, we try to exaggerate as much as possible on this stuff, which brings me to a question I <laughs> wanted to ask you guys. Is it, what do you guys think of like mocap? Like, it's good and all, but because of the 
because it's not hand-drawn animation or like animation you can create, it's just the motion that's been captured is a lot stiffer. I think when it's mixed with animation, like how they did in the Lord of the Rings, yeah. then it's a lot more better because you can exaggerate stuff. Yeah, when it's tweaked, it definitely looks a lot better. But if you do direct mocap, then it's good. When I was working on uh, Rhythm and Views, I was talking to a bunch of guys, and they had this folder on uh, language and wardrobe that they wanted to look for for reference, and I always create mocap stuff. I took the actual computer models of the, the monsters that were in there. They had people act it out, and, uh, and they had you know, walks and runs and all these cool things where you can slash the swords and stuff. And I was looking through the folder and going, this is awesome, this is really cool stuff. And all the other CG guys were looking at me like, you look at that mocap stuff, we hate that, that's going to put us out of work. And then I thought, no man, this is great reference, look at these cool twists and turns that are in here that you might not have thought of unless you saw this reference, you know. It's just certain, I mean, it's a good tool, it's a good reference, but I wouldn't use it just straight, but I'd like to embellish it. So, yeah, I, I agree that the modified tweak is even better. What is thy bidding, my master? <laughs> <laughs> I did this to show. I got the, the idea for this from the Richard Williams book, where he has this one page in dialogue where he's just got an outline of a face and he's doing dialogue. And so I thought I'd try it. What is thy bidding, my master? <laughs> what is thy bidding, my master? What is thy bidding, for my master? two-part answer to that. <laughs> I love working on ones because you get to get into every little nuance of the movement and stuff. You don't leave anything for anybody else to fill in. So I love working on ones personally. But I love working on twos personally also because there's 50% less drawings to do. <laughs> so you're cutting your workflow in half right away. Which comes in handy quite a bit uh, on the job. But uh, I don't know. I guess I prefer ones. Overall, yeah. It just has a, a better feel to it. Um, this I want to show you guys just for inspiration. I don't know if you've seen this. Yes.
By the way, uh, you notice in that, that uh, video there that uh, there's all this other, there's all this there's computer stuff in there, there's traditional, there's all kinds of things going on, and such. Um, I just want to let you guys know that this, uh, this facility is uh, pretty cool, and you guys are pretty fortunate to be here so that uh, you can hook up with other departments and stuff and do whatever you want, you know what I mean? So I definitely recommend utilizing that. Uh, when I was learning, I didn't have that. <laughs> I was just like by myself. <laughs> so it was pretty tough. Uh, it's a lot easier when you're surrounded by I heard it's supposed to be like it's more animator friendly than Flash. That's at least what I heard. I, I heard from my web animation teacher that we're going to start it maybe next year. I'm not sure. But. We're hoping. Oh, we're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> You do this rig right, but I want you to animate it right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're not using it right. So these guys, the whole team at the Sony were so cool, man. You go into the room and you say, hey, what can I do to make your job easier? And they say, oh, well, you know, watch out for you know, like geometry with the you know, intersects and stuff like that. And we try to accommodate them. And then when I do something, I'd say, well, I want to push it really far, you know, but the model's not going there. And it's, oh, okay, well, we'll fix the bones and make it work for you. And we'll modify stuff on the spot. Um, the <laughs> one I did the centaur that was by the guy's side. That one kind of sent all the way down. Um, the one crowd scene there's like a million of them, you know, going. I didn't do all that. <laughs> I just did the front row centaur and stuff in there. So I did not do the uh, I can't take credit for all that. Anyway, I'm just trying to show you guys how to use this onion skin feature to kind of lay stuff in and put down the heavy columns. Now the neat thing about this program is you can add this stuff in layers too. Like if I wanted to, I could create another layer, layer and do the arms separately. Sometimes I'll get a storyboard panel, but usually I don't get uh, that much information. They can all work on their own. So you just get the like, general like, perspective? Yeah, if you're lucky, if the background department already has the background, mm -hmm. it's just blocked out. I use straight ahead for action. 
progression stuff because you want to try to let things evolve naturally and see what the progression is going to be. You come up with lots of cool, cool twists and turns that you might not be able to plan out in poses. And in poses, I would post a pose I usually use when I'm um, doing acting. And I know I have to have a certain expression or a certain pose. It's obvious. That. But, um, Um, I won't tell you a little secret about that. <laughs> they hired me on as a storyboard revisionist, and that was my title, but they, the director told me, so what we really want you to do is do all the full animation scenes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give you all these scenes to do, and it was the best job in the world, because whenever the producer would come by and go, come on, what's, what's going on, you know, let's get this stuff done, and I'm like, uh, okay, and I go to the director and say, she's like, tell me, i got to get some stuff done, what is she talking about, you know? He says, you know what? Don't worry about it. And I found out later, he goes into the producer's office and says, you don't talk to them, you don't touch them, you leave those guys alone, they're animated, just leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, man, it's like a made man, you know? I, I find that the, I've always been drawn to the more cartoony stuff just because you get to mess around with things more. It's, it's so much fun to push things around, you know, push shapes around. So talk to this just something just for We're working on something like Stuart. Is there live action stuff already done for you animate too? Or? Yeah. are done, like on Mighty Joe Young, I worked on Mighty Joe Young, which I don't have on the demo right now, I don't think about it. But Mighty Joe Young had all the plates done. There was an end sequence and the Ferris wheel falls down on me. And we find that was kind of fun. And uh, it's, 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 it's somewhat limiting sometimes when you have to work with a live action plate because you have to match or register a certain thing. It's cool. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I was brought up on a lot of Ray Harryhausen films, so I like all that monsters and that live action movie. And it's, it's fun for me. I think I might enjoy them. It's real, real for me. I like the media and the remake of his films. Um, did you guys want, want to have a question and answer period now, or do you want to take a break first? And <laughs> oh God! Don't leave it up to them. <laughs> uh, yeah, how about if we just take a quick break and then we can have a question and answer period?